These seven principles, what are they? One, belief in Allah and the last day, which pertains to accountability. We'll have something to say about that. That's the first. When you explore the ayah, you'll find clearly stated, the people who do this, they believe in Allah. So the creed has to be sound. It has to be monotheistic, pure tawheed. We must refresh and purify our hearts from any stain of shirk giving partners to Allah. Accountability, last day, that's the first. Second, to do it in the way of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not good enough to react. It's not good enough to say, what else could we have done? I did something at least, no. We sit back, we explore, we find out what's the best way, the right way, the way that is according to the sunnah, which Allah accepts. And the sunnah can be fitted to our time and place and context. But that's the second point, to do it in the way of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If only we understood these two points, or the seven, that would be sufficient to prevent many of the unwitting, unholy things we do in the name of Allah and His Rasul. Ibn Muntafiq radiallahu anhu, he says that he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was on Arafat during time of pilgrimage and said, there are two things I want to ask you about. So let's hear this from the Prophet himself, peace be on him. There are two things I want to ask you about. What will save me from the fire? And what will enter me into the garden? And that's what we all want, don't we? At the end of the day, through all the life struggles, all the fun, all the pain, that's what we want, eternal happiness and eternal avoidance from punishment. That was the question. So the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, gave his reply, Hadith in Musnad Ahmad, and he said, although you have been concise in your question, it is of great importance, and the answer can be very lengthy. So grasp what I'm going to tell you well. Listen to it. It's going to be a summary answer. But you must try and internalize it, grasp it. So the Prophet continued, peace be on him, and he said, Worship Allah and do not associate anything as a partner with him. We've seen that as one of the golden precepts. Establish the obligatory prayers. Pay the zakah. Fast Ramadan just around the corner, perhaps this weekend it starts. Five pillars. Then comes the second point. Do it in the way of the Prophet, peace be on him. What did the Prophet say? He continued, the way in which you would like people to treat you, treat them in the same way. And that which you would dislike people bringing to you, then beware of bringing that to them. And that's the way to have eternal happiness. The Messenger of Allah, as you know, alayhi salatu salam, sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu to Yemen. And he gave certain instructions. And we can explore and evidence a lot of hadith, but this one would suffice, just one. Two companions being sent on a mission to a foreign land to settle amongst them and become ambassadors of faith. They're going to meet resistance, opposition perhaps, even perhaps enmity of a vile nature. But what are they supposed to do? بَشِّرَ وَلَا تُنَفِّرَ وَيَسِّرَ وَلَا تُعَسِّرَ وَتَتَوَعَّ وَلَا تَخْتَلِفَ Make, give them glad tidings and do not make them flee. So at all times we keep our ground. We stand our ground, we maintain good character, we feel the pain, we can endure the hurt, we can absorb the insults. But if we are going to be in a land which is primarily occupied by non-Muslims, this is the mission statement. Make them understand, make sure you pass on the clear call to paradise, success, happiness on earth before meeting Allah, glad tidings. And don't make them flee. Never do anything to make them flee, create aversion. Make things easy. Make things easy. Yassira, yusur is easy. Walatu asira, don't make things usur, difficult. Don't create hardships, don't complicate. Something straightforward, simple, keep it that way. Make it even simpler if possible. Then he says, love one another. Show brotherhood, show closeness, affinity, and do not differ amongst yourselves. Of course, as human beings, we are going to differ, 
but that difference should not lead to a loss of that, uh, that rapport, that closeness, that brotherhood amongst the Muslims. What was the third golden precept when enjoining goodness forbidding evil? Protection of one another. There are going to be situations where we're going to face sometimes fear or anxiety because of certain vulnerabilities we feel being in this environment. Rightly or wrongly, it is our duty as Muslims, if we are supposed to walk properly on earth, which Allah loves, to protect one another. Watch out, look out, think ahead what may bring trouble, what may create greater problems, what may even disrepute Muslims, although we are in the right. Fourth, repentance. The people who do this call for justice, call for a stand on establishing the rule of God, let's say. It must be by those people who have deep in their character the aspect of being repentful. And the chief characteristic of repentance is regret. It's nothing else. The rest are all mechanics. Asking Allah, stopping the work, not delaying it and so forth. Main thing in the heart, regret. So four things we always regret from as we grow older. We look back and we think about the words we have spoken. Perhaps misled someone. It could be the things we have done, struck someone. As I said, the speed, the sped arrow, it never comes back. It could be the past life, the time we had wasted or whiled away in futile exercises and the neglected opportunity. And that's the most hurtful. That as we grow older, we discover we had so many opportunities and so much ability, so much potential. And now that we are old, we say we are wiser, but we can't do them anymore because those events are not going to happen and those situations may never arise and we may never have the capability because we are infirm or not as able for whatever reason. So these things create regret and that creates a sense of repentance and repentance is good and if that is missing, we'll become arrogant. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reported anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that shaitan said, Hadith Qudsi, Satan said to Allah, by your might, my Lord, I shall continue to lead your servants astray as long as their spirits are in their bodies. This is Satan saying to Allah. And Rasulullah said, alayhi salam, the Lord who is great and glorious, Azza wa Jal, replied, by my might and glory, my exalted station, I shall continue to pardon them as long as they seek my forgiveness. So we are humble, we are modest, we should know our limitations and the possibility of going wrong at each and every step, but we are sincere and we mean the best and we genuinely care and we do our best to follow the truth. With the proviso, we know we can be always mistaken at every step. So we're never proud, never big-headed, never arrogant, never stroppy, never imposing, never domineering. Never. Fifth golden precept, prayer. And so much can be said about that. Sixth, charity. To practice real benevolence that changes lives of people and brings immediate practical relief, long or short term. And the duty is first in our own country. This is my country, Britain. I am in England. If people don't like me because of my skin color, and I hesitate to say, that's a different problem. But I am British or I am English. And my people are the British people, English. It just so happens most of them are not Muslims. But I do have to be patriotic. And I do love my people. Like Muhammad cared, alayhi salatu salam, for his people. And he prayed for them, wanted the best, and he wept over them until Allah com comforted him. Charity should begin at home, in our streets, in our towns, and zakat should be spent here. And it's not about doing da'wah or building mosques. That comes later. There are enough people in the UK, Muslims to start with, from refugees, asylum seekers to others, new, peop new Muslims, single mothers, runaway girls, abused people, all sorts of people, Muslims without jobs, great debts, and we ignore them. And we think it's only because money goes a long way abroad, it's far better to pour it all, all outside. It's never right. None of the fuqaha ever teach that or said that. That's the duty, charity. And it, it, 
crosses the boundaries and starts helping others whose hearts need to be won or who should be tempered against the enmity against Islam. It crosses over into non-Muslims. And the seventh golden precept is patience. And patience does not mean inactive, to sit there with folded arms and say, what else can I do? I'm suffering, I will just grit my teeth and endure it. No. It is to carry on being grateful to Allah, doing the right things in the right way, hoping for the best. And if we die in that process, paradise awaits by the mercy and grace of Allah. But we don't give up the struggle. These are the seven characteristics that define the right and proper personality of a Muslim who is carrying out enjoining goodness, forbidding evil, the dynamic faith. When he or she is doing that, that's when he or she is fulfilling the responsibility of walking on the earth or treading on the earth gently or softly. That's the title of this lecture or this, or this discussion. To walk gently. It's not mere etiquettes. It's not done with smiles and polite handshakes only. Those are superficial. It comes from the heart and all the seven qualities are to do with the heart. Whether it's charity or prayer or patience or belief and so forth. All from the heart is to do with faith.